Hello and welcome back. I'm Shana Searcy. I'm so excited to paint with you today. And today we're going to be doing this fun holiday illustration. Now, this is one of our Santa's Helper gnomes. Um, there's a video from last year that was getting lots of traction and people seem to really enjoy it. So I've brought him back and he's going to be helping out in another way here. So dropping down into this fun little chimney um, with this candy cane. And this is just a really fun illustration to do. Uh, we're going to be using um, watercolor as well as a little bleed proof white um, Dr. Peach Martin's bleed proof white to put on the stripes and the snow I'll go over all my supplies and materials as we go if you would like um, the outline for this uh, piece you can become a studio crew member and that link is in the description to this video if you just want a list of all the supplies and materials that is also in the description of this video but if you want to get the outline for this um, you can go ahead and become a studio crew member and download that outline as well as would be linked to the video and all of the other things all right, so let's get started. Here's my sample. Isn't he so cute? And then this is the one we're going to be working on. So I traced it out here and I'm actually looking that I forgot a whole bunch of stripes, but I'll just add those in by hand. These are our colors. So I have um, my core palette over here and these are the colors we're going to be using. So sap green, indigo, yellow ochre, Alizarin Crimson and Payne's Gray. And we will mix a few of these a little bit um, to get some variation, but the majority of it, you as what you see here, is what we're going to be using. Uh, the robes are going to be the green, the sky is going to be indigo. We're going to use this yellow ochre as part of the chimney. Uh, the Alizarin Crimson will also be part of the chimney and the candy cane. And the Payne's Gray, again, part of that chimney and his beard details. All right, so let's get started. I am not going to be taping this down, I don't think. Put my sample just out of view. Uh, because we're not going to be doing a hard line. As you see here, it's just going to be like a soft kind of bleeding edge. So we're not going to worry about a hard line or taping it down. And we're not going to be using a whole lot of water, too much where I'm too worried about the paper crinkling. So I am using 100% cotton paper. This is a piece of Arsh watercolor paper, 100% cotton, 140 pound cold press. I am also using for my brushes today, I have two silver black velvet brushes. Any round brushes that you have, I'm gonna use a size 12 and a size eight. And, but I also have a ton of Princeton brushes and things like that. So whatever round brushes you have will work great. We're actually going to start with the background on this one in indigo. So you want to get your indigo out. If you don't have indigo, a good substitution for this, if you have um, black or Payne's gray and a phthalo blue, you can make something pretty close to indigo. So you see my indigo there. Let's take some, cer um, not cerulean, this is phthalo blue. And add a little Payne's gray to it and you're getting that much darker kind of navy blue color. Not quite the same as indigo, but still will work just, just fine. You could also try to mix in some other um, different color blues with Payne's Gray to try to achieve that navy color. All right, so let's use our indigo. Now indigo, you're gonna put it on really dark. However, it's gonna dry much lighter all right, so that's something you just have to be mindful of. You might want to do multiple layers, but we're going to be doing, I'm going to start on the edge with my darkest color, and then I'm going to start just blending it out. I'm going to do this in sections. I am not going to outline the whole thing at once. So just getting my darkest color in here, and it looks super dark. It's going to dry much lighter than this. So I'll even be popping in a few little more bits of color as we go to these darkest areas. So now that I've outlined it, I'm just gonna dip my brush in a little water and I'm gonna let it get a little bit lighter, dip my brush again. All 
and just find my way around. And again, leaving the edges kind of raw. I'm not worried about having a perfect edge over here. And I even want them to be a little lighter right towards the edge. So you can already see how as this is drying, it's getting lighter. I'm just going to add some more pure color right to a few areas. So I have some areas that are like super dark and then other areas that are lighter. We're giving the impression of like a snowy night with a dark sky. You know, you have lots of clouds, but like with the atmosphere in the air, the snow coming down, which we'll put on later, you get this like atmospheric kind of look. Okay, but you can see here darker areas and you can see how much lighter it dries, but darker areas here, a little bit here, here, but then it gets lighter all around. So that's up to you. There's no exact way to do this. I try to keep the darkest areas right near the subject in some way, but it doesn't mean the whole subject has to be outlined in completely. You don't want to have like a super outline or a super dark outline and then like around the whole thing, that will just look odd. You want it to be a little more organic. In a few places be really dark. Others, let it be a medium tone. And be loose with this. This type of wash, I will say 100% um, cotton is going to be your friend if you have access to that, especially with these darker colors. They tend to do some funky things as they dry if you're being really loose like this, which is okay. We don't mind a little funkiness in this particular outline or in this particular background. But um, wood pulp papers or cheaper watercolor papers are going to dry a lot faster. And as you're continuing to work, will maybe present some challenges. Like paper towel. So I'm even like lifting up some color in some areas. And I'm running out of indigo here. I mean, I have more indigo, but I don't normally have indigo in my palette, so I just put a little blob on my tray. So this background might be a little lighter than I intended because <laughs> I'm running out of paint. I went into my candy cane a little bit right there, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fret about it. It's right at the top of the painting where I want it to kind of fade away anyway. So I'm noticing when I trace this, I forgot a whole bunch of areas. So the candy cane has no stripes on it, and the hat doesn't have its complete set of stripes on it. I will finish those in in our next step before we continue on. All right, you know what? I'm gonna take some of this, I might regret this, this phthalo and navy, and just drop it into a few areas. It's very close in color. It has a different, a little bit warmer tone to it, or I'm sorry, a cooler tone to it. Um, but I think it will work as just like an accent into some of these areas that I want a little darker. Improvising on the fly. I'm going to just drop a little bit of it. Let's make a little more. Down here. But you can see how it lightens quite a bit. as it dries. All 
All right, I'm gonna let that dry. Actually gonna put some of this color out here, a little bit darker. Well, now I feel like I need to put a little bit of it everywhere <laughs> so I can even out the tones. Put some down here. So it just doesn't happen on one side of the painting. So I'm gonna make a little bit darker area down here, maybe a little bit, boop, 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 there. All right, so finish up your background and then you're gonna let it completely dry before you move on to any of the next steps, okay? So we'll meet back here when your painting or when your background is completely dry. All right, we are back and ready for our next step. This is all dry, my background. You can see how it dried much lighter, but once we add on our gnome itself and the contrasting snow with the blue proof white in the background, it will start to pop even more. All right, so we're moving on to sap green and I've changed my brush size. So now I'm using my size eight brush. I started with the larger brush for the background, filling in lots of that space. And now I'm moving to my smaller size eight brush and I'm pulling out a bunch of sap green. And I love this sap green. So if you have sap green that doesn't quite, you want this more olivey color, you might wanna look at an olive color in some other um, brands. My paints are Core, Q-O-R by Golden, and I love their sap green. If you have a sap green that isn't quite this um, neutral, or um, earthy looking, you may just wanna add a tiny bit of your alizarin crimson to whatever sap green you have, and you might see a change in the earth tone nature of it. So I'm just gonna use straight sap green though, because it's my favorite sap green. And I'm gonna start painting in the robe and the hat. I'm gonna paint right over the lines in the hat. I'm not gonna worry about it. So I'm gonna start with my darkest saturation. So fully saturated, you can see how nice and lovely and dark that is. Under the arm here. And his robe is pretty much gonna be mostly a flat wash with a few areas where I'll add in a little more color for a little shadow and dimension. Cause it's, you know, it's a lumpy robe. It's not perfectly flat. So you can see here, there's little bits and bobs where I'm letting it be a little darker in areas, a little lighter in areas, but it doesn't have to be super intentional. Just let it be a lumpy robe. We're gonna go all the way to the bottom. And then we're gonna move up to the hat. Don't forget we have a little arm over here on the other side of the beard, which I will do. I just reminded myself that it exists. I'm gonna take a little water and just pull out a little color in a few spaces. Oh, you see, I just pulled a lot of color out there, but I'm just gonna dampen my brush and blend this in a little bit. So it kind of gives the illusion there's like a leg in there or something, or, and that material is kind of bumped out towards you a little bit, giving it a little bit of a highlight. And then just dropping in a little bit more color around the, under the beard where there might be a little shadow. And at the bottom here. And I'm just gonna let that dry. All right, I'm gonna flip this whole thing around so I'm not painting through my robe that I just painted. I'm gonna put more sap green 
And with the hat, I am going to be a little more intentional about where the shadow is. So I'm going to make sure the shadow is on the underside here. Now, we don't have a bright moon or anything casting a lot of light, but this part is slumped over underneath and wouldn't be catching as much ambient light that's around. I'm going to leave the top side of the hat a little lighter. So I'm going to start with my darkest, most saturated color. Again, sap green is going to dry lighter. All of your colors are going to dry lighter than when you put them on. And I think that can be for beginner watercolorists. That can be a little bit of a learning curve or a little frustrating. You put it on and it looks so beautiful and saturated and then it dries and it's just a much lighter tone than you expected. And you realize you have to put layers on. So layers are a big part of this process. So I've just rinsed my brush off. Now I have a damp brush and I'm just going to blend this out to the edge so that you can see we get like a nice gradual bleed of sap green fully concentrated to a lighter sap green. So this is called a gradient wash where it's darkest on one end and gradually works its way to a lighter color. Now, I know this is going to dry even lighter, so I'm just dropping in as it's drying and it's still wet. I'm using a wet on wet technique, so I'm applying wet paint to an already wet surface, knowing it's not going to stay exactly where I, where I place it. It's going to bleed a little bit, and that's what I want. I want a nice soft transition. I want it to bleed, but I'm just putting the paint kind of along the edge and in that darkest area. And then with a damp brush, so this brush has no beads of water on it. It's still damp. It's not completely bone dry, um, but I've dabbed all of the water out of it to just kind of move the edge of this ever so slightly. So using what's already on there, there's no extra paint on my brush or water. I'm just manipulating what's already on there. Ooh, and I have a errant brush stroke. And then I'm just going to let that dry, okay? And it'll be ready for us to put our stripes on it later. I can see my stripes through my paint. You can see that. That was intentional. When we apply the white, um, uh, bleed-proof white on later, you're, it's going to cover those stripes right up because it's an opaque color. So don't worry about that. You want to be able to see the stripes through the paint because they're going to be your guidelines later on. All right, let's get into our chimney. And you know what? I am going to, yes, I'm going to just push this up this way. So we're going to start with yellow ochre, which is this earth tone, natural yellow color, very muted, not bright yellow. And we are just going to put a base layer of this down. So I'm going to water it down quite a bit. I'm trying to use clean water so it doesn't get too muddy. Um, and I am just going to paint right over my brick. And, you know, I probably should have lightened up my lines for my brick quite a bit more. So you should do that. Um, so if you've traced this on there, lighten up those brick lines a lot because those are placeholders for where we're going to let this very light yellow color show through as we put red on top of it. So just paint it in. We're gonna paint all over top of it later. we are just gotta let it dry. All right, and let's move to the top of our chimney. And I am gonna lighten this up now with my kneaded eraser. See this snow edge here? I'm just gonna give that a little lighten. And then I'm also gonna go in the edge of my hat and my beard and just lighten up those lines. You want to still see them, but you don't want to be able to see them too distractedly through the paint. Okay. So let's get into a little Payne's gray. We're just going to take, so you can see I took a little, but it's very light. I'm just going to give it a little wash. We're going to add some darker color shortly. Go right under your little snow here. And I was pretty sloppy with my background earlier. I apologize. You can take your time. 
but I'm not going to worry about it too much. It gives it character. All right, so that's layer one of our chimney. And while we let that dry, we're going to flip this around. And while we have the panes gray out, I'm going to go ahead and do my beard and this hat here. So the underside of the hat, I'll show you because it's, it's, it's always a little daunting. But see all of this panes gray in here that gives it shadow and showing you where there are um, shadows in this white beard and white hat and white little puff ball. So it looks intimidating at first. You do want to start very light. So a lot of people tend to go in far too dark um, right away. You need to start much, much lighter. Like this is too dark. I'm just adding lots of water to it. This is when I highly encourage you to swatch out your color first before going into it. Because sometimes people start Oh, and that's blue, um, but their color is much too dark to start with. They, it looks light in the palette, but it's much too dark. You need something more like this. So swatch it out if you're not sure, especially if you're a beginner. Things look very different. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start around the nose. You don't have to turn your paper around upside down to do this if you don't want to. Um, but I'm gonna start giving it a little shadow around the nose, under the hat. And then just add in a few of these lines, trying to be very wispy and light-handed. And not everything has to be a line. Look at this, this is a large area that I filled in with some jagged edges. I'm gonna put some more detail over top of it to make even darker shadows. But I'm gonna start here with this light color. And I'm just going all along the bottom of this cottony hat. And again, I'll add a little bit darker layer on top. And same thing with my pom-pom. Start towards the area that meets the hat and then just leave some jagged. Helps to have a good tip on your brush for this. Wispy edges. Then I'm going to darken my paints gray just ever so slightly. And I'm going to add a little bit more around the edge of the nose there. So I'm making it a little bit darker. This is wet on wet. So they are going to bleed. I'm going to go under the hat. And I'm going to let that dry and reassess. It looks really funky right now. So much changes once you add a very light, warm color to the nose. It really rounds the whole thing out. Right now, it looks like a ghost elf. So let's wait for that step. We're going to move up here to the candy cane, add in those details, and jump back down to the brick chimney. Okay, so for our candy cane, we're going to pull out a lizard crimson. And we're going to paint in our stripes. Now along this edge here, we are gonna put a little bit of a shadow, but first you're just gonna paint in your stripes. You're gonna start from the one edge and go to the other. Don't worry about the shadow yet. And you can put in more stripes if you want, or thicker stripes, or lots more thinner stripes, however you want in a candy cane, but just they are always at an angle. I find that if you try to do them too straight across, it, it looks funky. It doesn't quite look like a candy cane. They're always like moving in an upward or downward stripe. And we'll even do one more up here. I'm adding this one in. It wasn't on the drying. I probably should have left it. Okay. So let's go down to our chimney now. This is dry. It didn't take very long. And I'm going to use alizarin crimson and yellow ochre to complete this part. So I'm going to start and maybe a little Payne's gray as well. Oh, that was a lot of Payne's gray. 
Sometimes you don't realize how wet and primed your paints are. There's no recovering from that one. All right, start again with a little lizard and crimson and some yellow ochre. Kind of a brownish red color. All right, and we are going to paint around. And what I'm probably gonna do, since I left these lines in so dark, those are our placeholders for where we're going to leave gaps. But I'm gonna paint right up to that line with the red to try to cover it a little bit and then leave a gap right next to it. I hope that makes sense. Um, so you can see with the first line here, so I've gone right up to that line and covered it. And now I'm gonna leave a little gap. See that? A little gap and paint over to the next line. And this can be a little tedious and or meditative, depending how you think about it, but go slow and work your way through each brick. And then while you're painting them, after you, so these are drying, I'm going to give, I'm going to paint to the end of this line and then I'm going to show you just adding in a little bit more color to give them some dimension so they're not all completely flat. And you can see I'm not reloading my brush between each. I have plenty of paint on my brush and I'm actually hoping it'll run out a little bit so it gets a little lighter in some areas. Now I'm going to pick up a little more color. I'm going to put a little bit extra like right under the lip of the chimney on these. Just to give it a little shadow there. And then I'm going to keep painting. So you keep following along. And the same thing, I'm going to leave a gap between the one above it and the one next to it. Don't worry about below yet. You can leave the gap on the next line when you go below. But you can see how... That starts to set up the shape of our chimney and that yellow mortar in between. And go ahead and finish up your bricks. I'm going to fast forward through this a little because this will take me some time. But you can pause and finish your bricks and then come back here when you're done. All right, bricks complete. Now we're putting in the final touches on multiple areas. First, we're going to stick with our Payne's Gray. So some more light Payne's Gray. I cleaned mine out a little bit. Light, light Payne's Gray. And I'm just going to put this down the edge of my candy cane right over the red. Not As long as you're gentle and the red is completely dry. This is just gonna give it a little dimension again. Okay, and then we're also gonna add a few slightly darker bits to our hat and around the nose. So you can see I'm just putting a little bit right around the nose. And just a few spots with slightly darker and then under the brim of the hat I'm gonna go right across the nose I haven't even painted it in yet but that will be part of the shadow that goes on the nose so there's a little bit of a shadow here and just a few spots Those look really dark. I am going to take my brush and just damp, kind of blend them out a little bit. And now, I'm also going to take my Payne's Gray. I'm going to add a little bit of my Alizarin Crimson and a little bit of my Indigo to make more of a purpley gray color. And I'm going to use that on my snow. 
I wanted my snow to be a little different color. So just giving it some shadows. A few spots on the snow and then underneath it with my Payne's Gray again, darker Payne's Gray. This can be much darker on the chimney. You know, the top of the chimney is a little sooty. The shadow under here, under the edge of the snow. And that looks like a super straight line right now. But what we're gonna do is take our brush, make it damp, blend it out. So it's not a harsh line. And then while it's wet, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more. There we go. And let's see, what do we have to do? We have to do that nose. That nose is gonna bring it all together. It really does. It's so funny how that works. All right, chimney complete. And any of these areas you wanna go back to and give a little bit more attention to, whether it's the bricks and do some more detail on them, you absolutely can. Um, oh, while I still have Payne's gray out, I'm gonna get really concentrated amount and do his little mittens before I do the nose. So just black mittens, you can make these mittens any color. If you wanna make them red mittens or purple mittens, so he has one little mitten there and one holding on to the candy cane up here. There we go. So for our nose, this one, we just need a super light reddish tan color. And we have exactly what we need. So I'm gonna start with a little yellow ochre, add some alizarin crimson to it to get this brown color. Now, the more red you add, the more red the color will be of the skin tone. The more yellow, the more yellowish it will be, or tan. So you can do a really pinky, and if you wanted to pull in magenta too, it'll be really pinky peachy color. So here, this is a much redder version, and this is a much yellower version here. So I'm gonna start by going right over that shadow. You see, I've left this part a little white. Our little nose is going to be darker towards the edges. Look how much that changes the whole look and feel of it. And now I'm gonna take this yellower color and kind of add it to the edge. And you might have to let this nose dry a little bit between putting on some layers of darker color around the edges. So if you let it dry for a few seconds, it doesn't have to be completely dry. It can definitely be a little bit damp. and then add a little bit more under the brim where it's darker and around the edge. But I do want it to have a little bit of a highlight kind of up here towards the front. So I'm just lifting out some color. And again, I'm gonna go a little bit darker knowing it's gonna dry lighter. Get some of my blue wandering in there. Just lift it out with a paper towel. You can see that. And I'm going to blend back in. It's had too much blue kind of finding its way in there. So this is a game of subtleties and adding little, little bits of color at a time until you kind of have the desired effect that you want. I'm just gonna add a little bit more color to this highlight. And there we are. Look at how that warmed up nose really kind of brings the whole thing together. 
And then if you want to add in anything else right along the edge of the beard, tiny little super contrasty little whiskers, you can do that. All right, I think we're done. Let's take a look at all of our parts and pieces and make sure I've remembered and finished everything. But thank you so much for joining me. I'm Shana Searcy, and this was a fabulous, fun holiday illustration painting. Just adding in a darker shadow under the hat there. All right. Oh, I did this last time. I forgot the stripes at the end. So we still have to do the white stripes on our hat um, and the snow. Yes, I've forgotten a lot of things. Okay, so just to recap, we did our robes in sap green. We did two layers on our chimney in order to get that brick layering with the yellowish mortar. We have our snow, our beard, our nose, our candy cane. We did a lot in this tutorial. I'm sorry it's so long, uh, but hopefully you've stuck with me from here until the end. Now it's time to do our white stripes. So let's get our bleed proof white out. Dr. Peach Martin's bleed proof white. They do make a similar product in other brands. So you don't have to use this brand, but these guys did it first and it's such a great product. So this is an opaque, but matte. So it's not like acrylic paint, like white acrylic paint dries with a glossy sheen because it's a plastic basically. Um, but this is opaque matte finish. Um, it's kind of like a gouache, but better. Like it's still pretty opaque, but much thinner. Um, gouache is really thick when it's this opaque, I feel. Okay. Anyway, so let's put on our stripes. Nothing too crazy about this. I'm still using my small brush and watch what this contrast does. It just makes everything pop. And then we'll do our snow, which is done with bleed proof white as well, slightly watered down, just so that you can sprinkle it on with a brush. So take your time on these stripes. Use a smaller brush if you need to. Feel free to turn your page if you need to. I'm not doing anything with the shading on these, really, with this particular product. So even though the underside of the hat is in shadow, the white is pretty going to be pretty consistent across the way. So break in some rules here, but that's okay. And you can add water to this. Just the more water you add, the less opaque it is. So it'll start to become transparent and give off a grayish sheen or just a cloudy sheen versus holding up as a white. Okay, so just keep that in mind. You do need to add a little water to it to get it to flow, but not a lot. And the more you add, just the less opaque it becomes. And just a couple more to go. My dog is snoring off camera. I wonder if you can hear her. She is my Velcro dog, meaning if I'm home, she is next to me. One more right here on the edge. And if you want to add any of this white little bits of it anywhere as little accents, just try not to overuse it. You could um, add some additional little flecks of white over some of the gray areas in your beard. But again, be careful, like you can overuse it. Putting it on top white, this white on top of the white of the paper doesn't really do much. 
or feel like it's contributing in any significant way. Um, but if you want to put it over top of something that you've already painted, like here on the snow, like over the purpley areas, just to give it some wispier texture, you can do that. But putting it over the white really just makes the white kind of look weird. The white of the paper is the better white to rely on for that, other than these little tiny detail areas where you're painting over top of um, some specific for some specific shapes like stripes or a tiny little highlight on an eye or a nose that you just weren't able to mask off or for snow, which we're going to do right now. All right, so let's get into our snow. Rinsing off my brush. I have a nice wet brush. I picked up some bleed proof white. I'm going to pick up just a little bit more water, but again, you don't want it to be too watered down, but I have a nice thick brush. Now, if there's any part of the gnome you want to cover up, like I don't like to get too much snow, like right on the face, like it can get on the robes and on the hat and all of that, but I just like to keep the nose and that area clear. And I'm just going to start to sprinkle with my brush and I do it this way. Like if you use a toothbrush, you're going to have really, really fine um, and consistent um, splatters. With the brush like this, where you're just kind of splattering it, you get lots of variation in sizes. We'll definitely let some go over the chimney. If I can get it to go over the chimney, you can use two hands also. There we go. Perfect. So now we have a beautiful snowy night and I do like it to go over the robe and the hat a little bit just so it shows that he's in the snowstorm. Like it's not behind him or um, not affecting anything in the area. So, but I just like to cover up the face so it doesn't interrupt that part. All right. Well, that is our Santa's helper um, going down the chimney um, on Christmas Eve, perhaps. Um Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, don't forget to check out the description. Again, if you want the outline for this, um, you can become a studio crew member. In addition to the outline to this, there's the outline to many other free YouTube tutorials, as well as video exclusive content that's only in the studio crew classroom. So it's a monthly subscription and you can find the link in the description of this video. Thank you so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Sorry, this was a long one, but a super fun one. And I appreciate you sticking around, especially if you've gotten all the way to the end. Thanks so much. I'm Shana Searcy and happy painting y'all.